Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd do something a little bit different for this video. Uh, so what you're about to watch is a full like 30 minute interview between me and one of my good friends, Steve, who's actually also a realtor in Surrey, BC. And what this interview is going through is my entire real estate portfolio, the properties I own, why I bought them, why I sold some of them, the partnerships I did along the way to get more properties and build up wealth over time and my long-term mindset to real estate investing. I hope you enjoy this video and check out Steve's channel in the description. I'll put it below. He puts out awesome real estate content for all of Canada. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end. Bye. My name is Tom Story. I currently own four properties with an estimated value of $4.1 million and we're gonna talk about that today. Wow, man, 4.1, okay. So you're just a rich guy and you bought just properties immediately and they're already worth $4.1 million or I want to ask you, sure. how does a young guy like yourself yep. start off in real estate? Uh, for those of you watching, I'm not talking about in real estate as a real estate agent. Sure. That's not what anybody cares about. Nope. You bought a property at what age? Uh, my first property at 23 years old. And how much did you pay for that property? I paid $350,000. 350 okay. How the hell does a kid at 23 years old come up with... Sure. Down payment. Yep. How, first of all, how much of a down payment? Uh, I put 20% down on that. So 20%? Roughly 70,000 ish. Yeah. And you're just, again, a rich kid? Parents helped out? <laughs> no, I wish that is not the case. Okay. So that first property, um, I had started working full time at about uh, the first year of being like 22 years old, like starting that year. So I bought this into like my mid 23rd year, basically. Okay. So a year and a half in. Um, I decided that during that time, because I was in the real estate industry and actually helping a lot of my friends start renting places. Uh, and I was like, oh man, I could move downtown right now and rent something awesome. But I just like, I, I couldn't do it. I just like, I was in the industry. I was looking at like long-term what it would be like to own property. It's like, I'm just going to save up. Yeah. So that first year and a half, frankly, like sucked. I lived in my parents' basement. Um, I remember even like first year in real estate selling real estate. So, so hang on, yeah. you're, you're licensed. I'm licensed selling real estate and I live in my parents' basement. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I was licensed, but I was working. And in that first year, I was meeting clients, starting to do things. And I saved up as much as I could. I basically saved up, I think, like $45,000 in yeah. that first year and a half, actually saved it. Now, that was income from selling and leasing homes. Correct. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, now, what happened was I got to the point where I thought, okay, I have almost enough of a down payment. And full disclosure, my parents did help me. Okay. They helped me with $20,000 extra. Okay, cool. Um, but what happened too is I was self-employed at the time and I didn't have enough uh, uh, two years statements to show that I could get a mortgage. So that first property, my dad co-signed with me okay. and I lived there, I covered all the costs because I, I could afford what it was gonna be on a monthly basis, but I couldn't afford necessarily the total down payment at that time um, or just getting the mortgage approval. Okay, so you bought your first property, dad came, now did dad just co-sign for the loan or did he have to come on title? He was actually on title with okay. me, yeah. Yep. And then, so you bought that property and moved in and just became a millionaire off of that one property. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Um, basically what happened is that was the first property which I've actually sold now, um, but I sold that to put money into into other properties. Hang on, at, at, at 23 years old, that's how many years ago now? Because you're like six uh, now, right? So <laughs> that was seven years ago. Okay, so seven years ago, what the, did 350 get you in downtown Toronto? It got me a 640 square foot condo with no parking uh in king street west parking you toronto city people are so crazy yeah. that you buy like to me that just that doesn't make sense right being from the burbs it yeah. doesn't make sense at all okay so one bedroom basically smallest little apartment nice little loft apartment good area but nothing special okay cool yeah. and then you moved in then i moved in uh, i lived there for about a year and actually funny the no parking thing i rented parking from the building next door okay and that's how that's what got me to my second property, actually. So wait, wait, wait. So you live in building A, mm -hmm. and then every day when you're wait, this doesn't make any sense. So you like, do you get like a fob and everything? <laughs> yeah. to go into building B yes. to get your car out. Yes. Really? What yeah. does that cost? Uh, it costs me two hundred bucks a month to rent that parking spot. Holy smokes. Okay. Yeah. Now here's a maybe a side question. Do you think if you were able to get financing for more, you would have been able to just for that two hundred dollars, you could have paid say fifty grand more? And bought something with parking. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. If I if I could have afforded more, I oh, could've... so like three hundred and fifty was like it was the max. I didn't have that was pretty much what I could afford okay. at the time. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you said because you rented parking, 
you bought another like sure explain now okay so i was renting parking at the building next store uh meaning when, when i would get groceries and stuff i'd have to park bring them up walk outside walk to my building go up the elevator it wasn't easy but in that area it was really tough to get parking the person that i rented parking from the building next store came to me one day and said tom i'm sorry i'm going to sell my condo you can't have parking anymore your parking landlord correct okay so at that time <laughs> i'm sorry this is such a ridiculous concept to me but okay let's, yeah, yeah. let's keep going so at that time i said wait like what are you selling because because i was thinking at that time like okay the space is good but i'd saved up some more money in that time frame this is like a year later by the way um i said let me see your place why don't i buy your place like really just saying it like out of nowhere i had no plan um i went and saw it i walked in i was like oh my god this is perfect it was an 868 square foot condo it was two bedrooms one bathroom had a parking spot obviously okay. at the building next door okay so is that now tom and i are friends full disclosure tom yep. and i are friends is that the unit that i saw the first time yes okay. i still own that property oh okay so you still okay so wait you did you sell condo number one to get to condo number two or did you get to a spot where you could buy condo number two no. and keep it the uh, when that happened i had to sell condo number one i couldn't have afforded to keep both at the time okay so you sell condo number one you bought for 350 is yep. it okay what'd you sell it for 415 okay in how many years basically a year holy crap okay yep. good so you're doing good and then you purchased the new two-bed unit for 570 570 okay so we're taking on a bit now. Did dad have to come on? To the no, at this point, I had enough experience uh, as someone that's self-employed and had done a little bit better in, in earnings and income okay. that I was able to qualify for this one on my own. Okay, cool. Um, what is next? So you didn't sure. just sit there. You didn't just go, okay, I'm done no. in real estate. I'm happy with my principal residence because so many people do that, Yeah. right? So what was the next step? So now we, we're back down to one property, sure. just a bigger property. Yes, um, which I was living in. Okay. Um, next step was actually another property came for sale at the original building that I had owned that first one at. And at the time I couldn't afford to buy it myself again. So I actually went in with a friend of mine and we each owned a percentage of it and bought it together. Okay. Um, he lived there during that time. And we, again, like this was just how the market was doing, but the condo market in Toronto at that time frame in 2016 went a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And that condo went up like a hundred grand in a year. And at the time we had actually refinanced that condo, took out a bunch of money, which set me up for something later and was still able to, if we rented it out, cover the entire cost. Okay. So you co-owned then the second property. It was the only way I could have done it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the friend actually lived there. Yeah. He lived so there. they, he covered expenses. Uh, he, co yeah. Him living there was like, as if he, it, we were renting it to somebody so he would cover all the expenses of living he covered so you didn't really have much liability unless your friend flaked out on you basically yeah okay, there was cool. not much to worry that's about. really unique because most people you're just buying an investment property and renting it to somebody totally random yep. right so i know some of these banks are starting to kind of kick in the idea of like this co-ownership thing right and that's yes. kind of what you did co-ownership has helped me leverage the opportunities that <laughs> got me yeah a hundred percent are you still friends with that person? 100%. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> yeah. that can go south, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like those those relationships, like he was a, I'm, I, I'm the guy that, that understood like where, where opportunities uh, were available in the real estate side of things. Yeah. He's like a stats whiz, like ran all the numbers. Like he's better on that side of stuff. So we had unique um, So pros. what is the, I guess the, uh, I don't want to say attraction. That's sure. not the right word. Did he come to you one day and say, "Listen, I really want to try and get into a place," or yeah. did you knew did you know he needed help? Or yeah. we had talked because we were friends, and he had actually said, "Why don't we buy like a multiplex outside the city?" And at the time, it's a bit different now, but at the time, you could buy a property outside Toronto, which would cash flow very well, yeah. but would appreciate one to two percent a year. Okay. Or you could buy in Toronto, which wouldn't cash flow or would cash flow like a hundred bucks, but would appreciate six to seven percent a year. Okay, so there's the two. You you are of the of the mindset that even if I have to feed a property, yes, getting something that can grow is likely going to be better than a cash flow because the the investor yes. way of doing things has always been well it has to cover itself right right like triple net people are looking for this amount of of cash out yep but you're really thinking like growth is the key for the specific market I bought in okay. I had enough historical data that I was confident in like this wasn't a one-year flip situation right it's like yeah. I'm going to try and hold this thing for as long as I can yeah um and I know when you break 
when you break down the carrying costs of it, it's like, okay, there's the mortgage, there's the condo fees, the strata fees, and then there's taxes and insurance. Yeah. Um, but if I looked at the mortgage and split it up to principal and interest, renting it out okay. on the cash flow would have covered all the interest, all the strata fees, all the taxes, all the insurance. And if I was, let's say, negative $300, it's principal. So it's really just yeah, like a yeah, poor savings plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's basically a, T well, TFSA, not really, because you're not full owner there. But anyway, um, so now we've got property B, sure. two bed you're living in. Yep. 50% of Property C. Correct. Okay. What's next? Okay. Next was a townhouse yeah. um, that I'm actually currently living in. Uh, okay. Same situation. Uh, a good friend of, friend of mine from childhood. Um, this townhouse came available. I said, you should buy this. Freehold properties don't come available in this area that often. Yeah. I showed it to him. We walked in and he was like, this is great. I just don't think I have the funds available at this point. Mm. That's when the light bulb went off for me again. I said, you want to buy this 50-50? So I went into another partnership. So you're looking at... Yeah. I couldn't have done any of these things on my own. You had you couldn't have done them on your own. Your friends couldn't have done them no. on their own. But you're identifying an opportunity and trying to capitalize on that. Yes. So did you move your friend into then to this property? No. So when we bought this townhouse originally, uh, we rented it to a family. Mm -hmm. uh, I was still living at my condo, the, the one I bought for 570, the next door one, and he was still living at the condo, at his own condo as well. Okay. So what the cost for property i think we're on d now yeah it was nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. okay um most expensive we had ever bought i was terrified i even remember when we sent in the offer i was like i wouldn't be mad if this didn't work out like i yeah. remember like really being worried about you it. you almost have to be I, I think that you're 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 not in a great spot if you're not slightly uncomfortable with yep. pushing yourself because yeah. if you're just like yeah that's easy yeah it's probably not a property that could grow to where you want it and you know what the just the down payment for that place, because I had split in about $100,000, that came directly from the refi of the of the investment one I bought before. Okay. It was like what I saved up plus my portion of the refi. So you're, the whole time you're doing this, you're pulling equity out of the properties that are growing to get to the next spot. Up to this point, that had been exactly what I'd done. Okay, yeah. cool. And now, uh, having seen that property, it's the one you're in now, that is, for, for all the people that are watching this and specifically thinking about Surrey style of properties. Sure. It, for all intents and purposes, is what we would consider a tandem style three bedroom townhouse yep. in my marketplace of yep. Surrey. But here in Ontario, you guys have freehold attached properties. Yes. Which to me is absolutely freehold crazy. townhouse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a totally freehold townhouse because I was looking and I, I saw that one out your back window and I was like, why is their roof different than the yeah. guy next door? It's because there's no strata. No, no strata. Okay. So that's crazy for but me. That's why I well. bought it. Because I was like freehold. Oh, because you don't then have a strata fee. No. So the carrying costs on it, and again, there's obviously expenses along the way owning freehold properties, but there was no strata fee. It's just mortgage, taxes, insurance. Do you guys have rental restrictions in Ontario? We do have rent control. Yes. Rent control on price. Rent control on price after when they're already a tenant for one year, you can only increase it a certain amount. But do you have a rule where the strata can rule out rentals where rentals are not allowed it is not very common in ontario really? most stratas allow for rentals in, in most buildings oh wow yeah. okay cool so but this is freehold so you can rent it out whenever you want do whatever and that's exactly what we did okay so you rented that out uh you paid sorry again paid 950 uh have you seen an increase there yeah that that that's property is currently a, worth 1.3 i'm being silly because it's, yeah it's 2021 obviously yeah. everything has gone absolutely nuts okay so we have uh, you now have moved into that spoiler alert yep. for everybody there. So, so you, the previous properties, so we've got a one bed condo, mm -hmm. a two bed condo. Yes. Those are both now rented or have you? Yes. When I moved in uh, to the townhouse, I rented out the two bed condo. Uh, the one bed condo was still being lived in by the other uh, investor of mine that bought it with me. Okay. Any of those cash flowing positive yet? Uh, no. Well, maybe like a hundred bucks or something. Okay. But they were basically breaking even, but appreciating extremely Massive well. Growth. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and then, so so you're basically getting older. Mm -hmm. It's going to be family home, sure. that sort of thing. Yep. Probably downtown Toronto. Yep. Uh, what's the next step? So the next step was at that point. Um, uh, and this one came out of nowhere, kind of. It was very similar and. You know, surprise, surprise, I did this other one, partnered with somebody as well. Okay. Um, there was a, a good, good friend of mine, like my, my um, university roommate, 
had said to me, like, I don't have the down payment ready right now to buy what I want, but I, I don't want to get left behind in the market. And so we sat down for lunch one day. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. This is property number three that you've yeah. connected do with you, other people. You yeah. really trust your friends. I do trust my friends. Uh, I wouldn't do these things with it. I know it's been three different people, uh -huh. but it's I'm like pretty selective on who I would do this with. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, we looked at a new construction option and this was in 20, this is in 2018 now. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, there was this really unique building that had come up and we went in and we, we bought this one for $550,000. Again, split it 50-50. What's funny is it's literally actually finally closing. Like he's lived there for a bit now in interim occupancy, but finally closing next week. What, what do you mean interim occupancy? So there's something uh, in Ontario with new construction condos uh, when you get the keys and you can go live there, but the building hasn't actually officially become a condominium corporation. I don't think that's a thing in BC. Oh no, in BC if, so we have provisional occupancy yeah. and then full occupancy, sure. final inspection. Yeah. In my marketplace of Surrey, uh, it's not uncommon for the developers to not get the final final, and it causes headaches right. in the future. Yeah. So it's one of the things you have to look for. Yeah. Okay, so it's already so, but it's not closed yet. Um, Is there money in escrow or something? It's about to be closed. We were literally setting this all up, like it's going to happen at the end of this week. But he's already in it. He's been in it for six months, and you basically pay rent to you're, the developer. That's a whole other video. You're blowing my mind. Yeah. You're blowing my mind. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So now that's. The fourth property. Yeah. You're really, I did not know this, that you are legitimately like leveraging. Yes. With trusted friends. Yep. Like that is a strategy that I had never considered. I don't think anybody likes me that much to possibly get to a spot where you can do that. I mean, I have bought an investment property with a partnership before. Yeah. Um, but my financial advisors always told me if you can get out of a partnership on good terms, take the opportunity. Yep. So as soon as you have a, a good enough, um, increase yep you should jump out if you can uh so that's exactly what i did now i've gone back in on another property but hey, what if you had stayed if you had stayed in that i wish i would have kept it okay so <laughs> yeah i mean it i absolutely it's just like everything right you you wish you would have kept it yeah um i was terrified of that particular property just because of its age sure uh you guys are much more used to that here because yeah. you are used to older properties yeah, i mean driving out to where we are now i was looking at like <laughs> it's near it's almost how or it's at past halloween guys and it was just like that these are really haunted like they look <laughs> that old right like yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy yeah so okay so uh you bought that property um and that one by the way was because it was new construction it was a staggered down payment so, so it's it's full pre-sale was not constructed when you bought it. it was a piece of dirt we bought a floor plan yeah. okay so multiple years ago that was in 2018 yeah did you buy that before you bought any of these other ones that you were talking about uh no, no, this was the last one okay. until the cottage property, which we'll get to. Okay, cool. Well, let's get to this. So, okay, so that buddy's living in that one. Yeah. A any of the other ones sold? Because we're currently at Not at this point. Four. So so there was four at that moment. Okay. Um, what happened is if we go back to that 50-50 that one that we had refinanced, that I, the first one I did a partnership with, mm -hmm. and this was... That was a one bed. That was a one bed, okay. yep. Um, that one we bought for 360 by the way. And, and we decided that guy was ready. He was getting a serious relationship with his girlfriend. They wanted to move to a house. We had this conversation about, okay, you know, are we going to sell this thing? Mm -hmm. It was actually pretty perfect timing because I was at the point thinking, okay, do I want to buy the Toronto home, like the, the, the home, the, the dream yeah. home, the 10 year, 15 year home. Yeah. And, and again, this was like early COVID. Um, you can blank that out if you don't want to get the, yeah. you know, the, <laughs> the, you know, whatever. But anyways, so I just thought like, I want to buy a cottage. Let's do something completely different. And but the only way for me to be able to buy the cottage that we are sitting in today yeah. is sell that 50-50 property and every dollar of down payment I put into this, I got from selling that. Came out of there, so no more money out of your pocket. No. Except for the beautiful renovations that we should probably show. The renovations, yeah. Um so did you have so you you and and this investor partner that lived in that unit? Yeah. You just had an agreement like this is best time for both of us to sell. Yeah, it worked out pretty well in terms of the timing. Do you have agreements of yes. like how stuff is going to go down yeah, we in have... the event that things don't go well or someone wants out early? Yeah, we have a trust agreement okay. uh, that is written by a lawyer and we sit down and review it before. Yeah. yeah. There's so many, like in my marketplace, there's a lot of uh, cultures that have multi-generational families. Sure. They don't like to have the discussion of like, 
This but you got to get ahead of that. Like if I decide, you know what, I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm moving to Calgary and I need this money out to go start my family. They just don't have those agreements mm-hmm. set and it's just it can be so painful like if uh, often one investor wants out a lot earlier than the other one yeah that happens right. a lot so i'm glad that you do that okay so let's tell us about here because this okay. particular property is um i'm proud of you man for getting it thank you it's awesome yeah uh, i got my own room because i'm staying here um what went on here okay so we had decided okay we want to buy a college property and the only thing i cared about is it had to be on the water which sounds obvious for a college property but that was most important it's not obvious for a cottage property define most of people watching this are going to be from bc sure what the hell is a cottage like (laughs) we don't have cottages sure cottages are what you think is like muskoka um that kind of area just it's like a three-hour drive from toronto you go it's basically in the woods on a lake uh, or you know just basically that it's normally like there's a there's a little city or there's a little town maybe like okay. 20 minutes away but that's it are they they're generally rec properties they're generally yes okay yeah. cool. and you wanted to just uh, have now i guess your city property you got three bedrooms it's enough room to enough raise room. a family yep. if you need to and now it's like okay i want to get the hell away from the city like, yeah what? and again like this was during the time where we couldn't do anything right yeah. like when i i i started getting serious about this in early 2021 uh, actually maybe late 2020 to be honest and then we found this opportunity in february 2021 uh and jumped on it as quick as we could yeah okay. so uh i can't imagine properties uh on the water yeah are going to be easy to find no uh, three blocks in, I'm sure there are a ton of easier. Yes. Right? Yep. Big country blocks, by the way. Yeah. Um, wh- when you bought this property, are you experienced enough where you're like, I'll just take it? No. Do you do inspections? Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you're probably on well here. Yeah. We're on well and septic, which is totally outside my comfort zone of selling properties in Toronto. Yeah. Um, so what I did, like, obviously I'm in real estate too, we're, we both do this for a living, but I'm buying in an area here that I don't understand. Um, I don't sell these type of properties. So I actually hired a realtor in this marketplace okay. uh, to help me find this. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. I got a point at a camera here. I don't know which one's on, but he's a realtor. He hired, you hired your own professional because it was outside of your comfort level. I could have bought this on my own. Because you're licensed within. Uh, in, Ontario, in Ontario. But I just felt like I didn't fully understand these type of properties. Like, you know, I can close my eyes and tell you what a con is worth downtown Toronto or a house like in that area. But up here, it's like a private roads you got to deal with snow. There's all these things. Oh, okay. Because you had mentioned things like, you know, when we leave here, you probably got to take garbage with you. Like, so yeah. garbage pickup. There is garbage pick, pickup. There but, is. Yeah. But like things that you don't, that you may not even consider or know about because you're city boy. 100%. Right? Yeah. Like, I yeah. always think of it this way. At my house, I flush. And I don't think about it no more, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? I know out here, that's probably not the case, right? Yep. There's going to be things that you have to think about, septic yep. inspections and yep. that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm glad to hear you did that. Okay, so you found an... Op- now, um, on the, like, just on the MLS, hey, my realtor I hired, come find me this property? Uh, not in this scenario. So uh, I, I feel like I got lucky a little bit on this one where the realtor that I had hired named Sydney, who's awesome... Um, she knew that this property was coming to the market okay. and knew the sellers well enough and said like, do you want to come see it before it goes to the market? And I said, yes. And do you think that happens more in small towns? I think it happens more in small towns because there's actually less realtors and everyone kind of knows each other. Yeah, yeah. So I think it happens a lot more in the city. It doesn't happen as much. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have what in Toronto? A bill- <laughs> Are we at a billion? A there's billion there's 7 million people in Toronto. So there's about 6 million Realtors, uh, is about, about sixty-five thousand. Right? Yeah. yeah, and I mean Vancouver's the same thing. We've got forty-five thousand yeah. or something like that. What was the thing we heard from a presenter at a conference we were at? Just you know, if you throw a rock, you'll probably hit a realtor. You will probably hit a realtor. Uh, so yeah, I get someone it. Someone okay. with a real estate license. Someone with a real estate license, absolutely. Um, okay, so you now have your cottage. Yes. Um, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Maybe insert pictures here if I can figure out sure. how to edit that in. Um, What's the plan? So this, I mean, this was a long-term thing. Like when I bought this, I'm like, I'm keeping this forever. Uh, as long as I can, I want to pass this down. Like that's the type of property it is. 
Um, is, is that something that happens with cottages? They get passed through families? Very, very often. A lot of people that I grew up with that had cottages, it was because their their grandparents had cottages. That yeah. Their par- yeah, yeah. Okay. It happens a lot. Because that's kind of a, like a piece of Canadiana that we yep. almost don't get on the West Coast. Yes. Right? Because we drive five minutes and there's like a mountain here and you, there's there's not a lot of rec properties. And I mean, I think the last time I went through Whistler looking at rec properties, they were like two, three, four, five million dollars. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't yeah. just... You know, you can't just go out and, oh, this is a nice place, right? It doesn't really work that way. So this is going to be the, uh, I don't want to call it, is it a legacy type Yeah, I, I don't see why not. Like, I would have, whenever, so far, the only reason I would ever sell a piece of real estate is to put the money into another piece of real estate. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying that your money, listen, if I put my money in Tesla a year ago, it would have been way better than this. Yeah. But I don't understand that. And mm-hmm. I just stick to what I know. I don't think anybody understands <laughs> yeah. that. It's such a gamble, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that all the comments will say this is a gamble too. It is, yeah, of course. What's next? It's a good question. So I got my first kid on the way at the end of this year. I'm um, sorry, and also congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what's next right now is, uh, surprise, surprise, got a partnership thing going on. Uh, we actually have an offer accepted uh, back in your area, okay. a five-plex in Vancouver. Um, we were able to get a commercial mortgage on that. Um which does not impact my personal credit score, which won't impact my other uh, buying residential properties here. Yeah. So that's very important. Cool. Yeah. Is that it? No, I want to keep going. You're going to keep um, The way I look at it, like, I knew if I liquidated all my properties right now, and obviously, like, I've got mortgages on them. When I tell you the value at the beginning of this video, like, sure, it's not all equity. Yeah. A good chunk oh, is. Totally. A good chunk is, but it's not all equity. So all of them are covering this cottage. If I were to rent it out one week a month, it would cover all of its costs. I could own it essentially for free. Okay. Um, and that's something that we're considering. So what's next is I'm going to start looking more at the commercial side of things. I want to own more doors than just properties. Yeah. Um, uh, also because just getting financing, they don't just look at income and stuff. They look at total net worth. Uh, and it's a little easier to, to get financing. Easier, yeah. but harder. It's easier, e- it's easier if you have money um, or yeah. if you're worth more. Yes, but I'm only worth more because i'd invest in real estate yeah 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 Yeah, so it's not um for your residential properties property manager or self uh i'm i'm doing it self right now but they're all within a 15 minute drive other than the cottage okay yeah cool what do you know property management fees in ontario um i believe it can be up to like 10 percent of the monthly rents yeah super similar to what we have um well, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, of course, what else, it's fun. What else can you? What else can you tell me? What? What? Okay, I, I gotta. I gotta. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let you go with it. I was gonna say sure. really quickly, like advice for first time. Yeah, well, or, that's where we're gonna go. That's but gonna if, go. if someone's still watching this, yeah. they're interested in investing in real estate. Sure. So, uh, I don't know. Don't talk. Talk to me. Don't talk to the camera. But okay. Sure. Every every t- every investment that I've made, I've been a little bit scared. <laughs> like I've been like, oh, I don't know about this one, and then it always works out. And I've kind of even pushed myself to the point where like, there's risk involved. Like this isn't for everybody. You can't be of the fan of heart. You have to be able to go through the ups and downs. Um, and this is always a long term play. But what I would say to someone that's like thinking about getting started is like, whatever you think your dream house is, it's not your first property. Yeah. yeah. Like if if I had just saved forever not bought any of those ones before and just tried to buy this cottage, I probably would have just been able to afford it by now, but I would have missed out on all these other opportunities. Seven years later. Yep. Yeah. Because that was, I mean, that always, I have a a story that I always say about a friend, like I bought a condo when I was 25. Yep. And I had a friend that was saving for, I think a townhouse at that time because he didn't want to live in the, he wanted the garage and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he got to that townhouse five years later uh, and saved for it with yep. 5% down. Yep. And, you know, four years later, I got to the townhouse with 20% down because of the investment. So, I mean, <clears throat> it is the best way, obviously, for, for dummies like me to make money because I don't understand, like you're talking about, people are into crypto right now. People yep. are into, you know, stocks. And some people make a lot of money there, but they but they also lose a lot of money there. So yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. Um, cue all the comments down below. You guys are about to lose all your money Fine. right now. <laughs> Fine. But I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah. Because I look at the 40 year history of the market that I'm buying in, yeah. and I understand there's ups and downs. But I'm not selling these things. Yeah. I'm holding them. Totally. And a lot of people in Canada have become 
Wealthy by mistake by owning real estate. Just by owning over yep. a long period. Awesome. Thanks for doing this, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, thanks, everybody. If you're still watching, make sure to hit the like button for Tom. They're not for me this time. For Tom, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you like this sort of information, let me know because uh, I think this is a great conversation to have. Yeah, lots and, of fun. Uh, we should definitely find more people to do them with. And next time I come back to Ontario, I would like an update to find out where you are. Sounds next, good. And how Can't many wait. more bazillions of properties and how you become so rich. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, check back soon for another video in another couple of days. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you like this type of real estate content, please go below and click subscribe, like, and hit that bell. If you want to book an appointment with me, in the description, there is a link directly to my website. You can book a buyer consultation, a seller consultation, or just a call to chat about real estate. Have an amazing day, and remember, home is where your story begins.